I'm going to speak today about an important issue in organization, which is the silence. And um, I'm going to talk about silence, which is caused due to the fear. And I will see to it what is the role which attachment plays um, in origin of fear. Uh, just to give you a background that uh, I had started studying Jain philosophy last few years. And in Jainism, which is very similar to Buddhism, um, uh, fear has been studied in detail. And it is considered that all human beings have some kind of a fear in, uh, inbuilt. And that fear is the basic cause of all kinds of violences, what we, what we incur. This encouraged me to, to study and go in depth to try and find out, does fear as it exist in human beings? Does it exist in organizations also? And then I started my empirical study and to find out what research work has been done. And I, I, I was quite inspired by this subject which I propose now to take as a doctoral study, um, which I'm planning to undertake. And in this, to try to create my hypothesis, Dr. Ora Sitter really helped me and encouraged me. And she invited me in, in a way uh, to come and speak. So with this background, I'm starting here. Uh, to give you a context, I'm trying to take you through an, a hypothetical episode, which has been narrated by Morrison uh, in the, one of his research paper which says that imagine an organization where CEO has no clothes. The CEO's lack of clothes is apparent to all who set eyes upon him or her. Yet employees never mention this. Some employees even compliment and praise the CEO's attire. The CEO takes pride and comfort in the fact that subordinates recognize his or her fine taste and clothing and easily dismiss those few troublemakers who look at him or her strangely or who, or who dare to suggest that CEO's taste in clothing is anything less than impeccable. Yet, behold, these employees are not blind behind the safety of closed doors and in veiled whispers. They talk of their leader's clothing. They all clearly know that CEO is naked, but only the foolish or naive dare to speak of it in public. Welcome to the world of silence in organizations. Uh, we all leaders claim that they give the right platform to employees to speak, but do employees feel and perceive the same or, or, they, or they feel it is better not to speak? Uh, this is an important issue, but um, when I was making a research, I found that workplace emotion, there's a lot of work which has been done, when, but relating to fear, there's very little, which inspired me. Let's see this few of the effects of silence in organizations. There are several negative outcomes which has been researched in the past, which has been like Enron case of corruption, accident of Columbia shuttle, limiting creativity, individually silence has leads to stress, cynicism, distress, dissatisfaction, less engagement in the change process. Um, but here I must also say that this, there's a not everything negative about silence. Um, some kind of a silence is also help uh, not to overload with the information of the employees and to, to reduce the internal conflict. Uh, to understand silence, it is very, very important to understand the silence is not about not speaking up. It's not that uh, mindlessness that I don't want to speak about. It is a motivational, it's a, it's a, it is a decision which you take that I want to remain silent. And that's the silence which is, uh, we are talking about. And also we have to understand that silence basically has, uh, can be of different issues, that I can be silent about uh, the productivity and improvement in organization. I can be silent about, uh, uh, say, ethical issues. Uh, then it has the various sectors. There are employees, individuals, senior levels. Who are the ones who are remaining silent? And who are the targets? I'm silent about with my boss, or I'm silent with the, with my suppliers, or I'm silent about my, my regulators. So the silence has a multifaceted construct, uh, which we must keep in consideration. So primarily what we, what we found that the silence is because of three kinds of behavior. The first one is where, where the employees disengage. They are not interested in any, uh, any issues of, of organization. The, the second one is where the employees remain silent because they want to cooperate. It's a pro-social. They want to do some benefit to some, somebody, and they decide that let's not speak about it. But the third one, which is the most, uh, uh, which is very important, is the protective silence, where the employees feel that they want to protect themselves. And they find that in order to protect themselves, they decide not to speak. And this is the, the, the issue which we want to speak. Uh, the defensive silence, which has been described as the intentional and proactive behavior involving awareness and consideration of alternatives 
followed by a conscious decision to withhold ideas. So it's a decision which is a very conscious decision. Also, when we are talking about the fear-based silence, so it is very important to understand what fear is. I mean, as I said, the fear is, exists in every organization. Fear is basically an avoidance behavior, and fear needs a specific target in order to trigger it. In organizations, fear has been um, uh, in the various forms. It is fear of failure, fear of success, fear of change, uh, fear of unknown, fear of survival. And all these fears, primarily somehow or the other, leads to the fear-based silence, which practically we would say um, can be seen in the form of that the employees are fearful that they should not be labeled or viewed negatively. They are fearful that it should not damage relationships with their, with their co-workers. They are fearful that it should not lead to retaliation or punishment or, or getting away of the awards. Or they feel that it can create a negative impact. So these are the basic fear-based silence uh, issues which employees feel in the and exist in the organization. But, but primarily, do we feel that all employees have this, the same fear or does it vary? What are the characteristics? What are the features which, which differ one employee versus other? So then I tried to map out what are the antecedents which have been researched by the Western researchers in the past. And I categorized it into the three categories. The first one is the individual characteristics. The second is the leadership. And the third is the organizational. So in individual characteristics, it's basically about the self-esteem, the locus of control, uh, the job experience, the emotional intelligence, the communication skills. These are the factors which, which encourage employees to overcome fear and they speak out very much what they want to speak about it. Secondly, it all depends upon the leadership also, how supportive the leader is. I mean, are they open to it? What kind of a background the leader is coming up? I mean, are they encouraging employees to speak or not? So leadership characteristics become very important. And the third becomes is the, the definitely the organizational characteristic. How open is it? Is it a hierarchical structure? Is it an open structure? I mean, is it working in a very competitive environment? It is working in an uncertain environment. So these are the basic characteristics which have been researched in the past, which I have tried to map out. But basically, I mean, I'm just uh, uh, skipping the quotes. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, as we have seen the, the, the causes for the fear which have been studied, we also must understand uh, that what are the reasons, what are the reasons for the origin of the fear? The fear is primarily considered to be originated as has been scientifically researched because of the two reasons. One is the predisposed, which is like an evolutionary. We have been always fearful of snakes, spiders, darkness, height. These are the few fears which, which exist from our ages, from our origin, from our evolution. These are called the predisposed or the prepared fears. And in the organizational context, what we talk about, fear of challenging a higher status authority has been considered as a prepared fear. Similarly, I mean, the other kind of a fear is the learned kind of a fear, which means that it is not, it is over the years that our, our conditioning that we learn. And it could be because of your personal experiences or it could be watching others that you watch others to be ridiculed and you, you develop the fear about it. And primarily, uh, the learn-based fear are three factors, the childhood learning, the institutional learning, or the cultural socialization. Uh, here also, I must say that the, the, the cultural power distance has been researched very extensively by the Western researchers, which clearly comes out that the power distance, for example, in India, it is very difficult for an employee to speak straight in the eyes of, of their bosses. But what I have been made to understand that in Israel it is relatively easy where the employees can express. So cultural power distance comes out to be a very effective way to understand that how employees can, can talk about it or not. What we have studied in the, what we have talked about is the, the Western part of it. But now let's try to see that what, what the, the Eastern philosophies talk about it. Uh, the ancient Jainism philosophy has always talked about that the fear is linked to our attachments. It means that when I'm attached to something, I'm afraid that it may not lose, we may not lose, and that is the origin of the fear. And surprisingly, I mean, if you look at the modern research, I mean, modern philosophers like Jay Krishnamurti, he has also talked about the fear in almost the same way. It talks about the fear does not exist in abstraction, fear is always related to something. Fear dependence is a kind of an attachment which leads to the fear. 
it all talks about the psychological accumulations and which is which is the basic cause that we are afraid that these psychological attachments should not be taken away from us which causes the fear so with this background i mean um, we have tried to look i mean i tried when when this philosophical aspect came to me i tried to see that how the western philosophers have the researchers have worked about attachment and then i found that job embeddedness has been very closely linked to the attachment My, michael lee has worked a lot about it that why people quit the job while few others don't quit then so it it turns out like the the individual characteristic leadership characteristics and organizational characteristics there are three kinds of attachments which exist in organizations one is the individual attachment one is the leadership attachment and third is the the work group attachment the individual attachment is primarily that i am attached to my family my friends my coworkers i am attached to the my my culture of the organization uh, it fits me very well i don't want to sacrifice the stock options which has been given to me or i don't want to 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 just give away the the beautiful club which has been given to me by the by the uh, by the organization these are the attachments i don't want to to leave the the position which has been given to me by the organization and these are the reasons which create the fear and the employees feel that it is better not to speak and safeguard these interests and so it becomes a very important characteristics that individual attachments uh, leads to the fear and it basically to protect those attachments uh, they they decide to remain the silent so my first hypothesis was that that the higher the individual attachment the more the fear based silence would be then if we talk about the leadership attachment it primarily becomes that sometimes leaders are very passionate about the ideas what they they talk about there is a very famous story of the samsung which was doing very well in the in the electronic industry and one fine day the ceo decided that let me go into the automobile industry i mean everybody i mean wondered well, what is what is uh, or samsung has to do with the automobile industry but but he but the ceo somehow at that time convinced everybody i mean there were a lot of protest but he convinced everybody there's a future of automobile industry and and at the end i mean uh, samsung sold this uh, after few years uh, at one tenth of the cost what they had invested so so sometimes the leaders are very passionate about their ideas and it may be considered that it is visionary ideas and they the 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 people down the line they want to protest but somehow they are not able to do it so we call this as an inappropriate attachment of the leadership which we one must be very careful and it could be related to anything technology it could be relating to my factory it could be related to my people my plan my projects any kind of and the third is the is the work group attachment which is the, the that primarily that you are attached to the work group and and uh, it it leads to the um, uh, the kind of a silence or not silence the more the attachment uh, the better you are able to cover so how do you overcome basically uh, there are two things which which has been proposed one is that if if you are living your true self then you are not afraid to speak so attachment to the authentic self becomes a moderating factor and also uh the self leadership primarily you are doing a self observation you you do a, a self reward self evaluation uh you are managing your own behavior so that that is what is required at the leadership level so these are the two basic moderating factor and uh, uh the self leadership is very similar to the the meditational techniques which has been talked about uh, in in indian philosophies also so uh, this is the hypothetical model which i have created on the basis of it that individual attachments the work group attachment and the leadership attachment these are the the three antecedents or three factors which would be uh, which be which would be li linked to the fear and the monitoring of authentic self and self leadership would help to moderate and and uh, can help to overcome and i have built a conceptual model which i am not going uh, much in detail uh, but i hope uh, once i complete and go into the research i will come few years back and 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 share with you thank you very much